firstborn son, and Jacob, uh, who is Isaac's firstborn son. Uh, well, actually, not technically, but he ended up getting it. Who were heirs with him? We'll get to that later. <laughs> who were heirs with him? That's a whole other story. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> and uh, a bit of a bit of deceitfulness in there in, in making that happen. All right. So, and who were heirs with him of the same promise? But he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though. He was past of age and Sarah herself was barren. Some of the translations actually talk more about Sarah. And uh, so, and I think it's, I think this talking more about Sarah is actually a more, uh, um, from looking back at the, the Greek and stuff, it actually seems to be more, it should, should be more about Sarah than it is about Abraham anyway. And so Sarah herself was barren and uh, she was unable to become a father. But <laughs> I'm reading, I'm thinking of one, one person. <laughs> And reading the other one, she was able to see. And and you need to have faith <laughs> to become a father if you are a woman. A woman. <laughs> you must have great faith. <laughs> These days, she could afford it. That's true. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and uh, and so they became parents. Let's just go with that. And <laughs> because uh, they considered him faithful, who made the promise. All right, so we go over to Genesis 12. Let's get introduced to this guy called Abraham. All right, chapter 12, Genesis. Um, the Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, and your father's house, and go to the land I will show you. It's a big call, isn't it? Leave your people, leave your country, leave everything that you know, and go somewhere else. I'll show it to you. It's going to be all right. He says this, I'll make you into a great nation and I'll bless you. I'll make your name great and you will be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. How many peoples? All, all people. Are you included in all? Mm, yeah. All right. So this man, Abraham, is a blessing to us. In fact, he is part of the lineage of of Jesus and Jesus is a blessing to all of us and so through this man Jesus actually comes into the world a long way a long way down the track but through this man um, <coughs> this happens he is considered to be the father of Israel and, uh, and, and, and actually he's considered to be the father of the Christian faith as well. All right, and so this guy, he says, I'm going to make you into a great nation. If we skip over to, um, there's a lot. You can read read lots about Abraham. It's a great story. Um, he rescues Lot. It's a fantastic little story. It's, um, you, you might have seen it in the, um, you know, if you, if you watch, the, watch the Bible or something like that. You know, it's quite graphic in, you know, when he's rescuing because it's a war. You know, this is war. And, uh, but he rescues his nephew, Lot. So he's kind of like adopted Lot. And so he doesn't have any kids, but God says, I will make you into a great nation. Um, chapter 15, God again comes and he says, the word, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Sometimes the word doesn't come by sound. But it comes in a vision. And it says this, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am sure your very great reward. So this is some this is like 15 years later or something like that. And so Abraham, like any good person who's got a brain, says, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And remember, God, you promised. And the one who will inherit my state is Elysia of Damascus. And Abraham said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. And so this is the promise that God had made to Abraham, but he, but he doesn't have any kids. And then he says, a little bit later, he says, he says, all right, so he's in his tent, like he's in his house, and he says, get out of your tent. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Get outside. He gets outside, and God says to him, Look up. So it looks up. It's night time. He's in the middle of the country. There's no there's no city with great big lights back then, is there? Yeah. And what does he see? Stars. 
Stars. How many stars do you reckon he sees? Billions. Billions, millions. And then God says to him, all right, smarty pants, <laughs> count them. Count them. That's what your kids are going to be like. Just count them. And so he looks up, and it says here, this is really important. Abraham, this is verse 6. This is, this is a clincher for us today. Abraham believed the Lord, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Righteousness is means right standing with God. Righteousness is, is salvation. Righteousness is, is like you are okay with God. See, see, Adam and Eve, remember that? They sinned. We're not okay with God anymore. God is holy. God is perfect. We cannot stay in his presence because he is holy and perfect. And can't, it's like gold can't, can't be refined with with dirt and stuff. It just doesn't happen. Like It has to be separated. God is separated from us because he's perfect, he's holy, and we're not. Right? That's the bad news. That is the bad news. But here is a, here is a template, here is a, here is a type of the belief that we can have and that can be credited to us as righteous. So we're not righteous, but through belief in what Jesus has done on the cross for us, we can be righteous. It's not that we have done anything to do it. Like he just died on the cross for us and we said, God, that was for me. Thank you so much. That's amazing. It's just him. You cannot earn it. It's just trust that he is good and that he's done. Does that make sense? It's just trust in him. So Abraham believed the Lord and it was credited to him as righteousness. And then he goes on to talk a little bit more about, you know, you're going to have this place again and then and, and so on. Now, now, Abraham, I might just, uh, have you got a tissue or something about what I can use? A uh, legend. Does it have any book on it? She's a lady. The lady's not had book, huh? Oh, that's just not working very well at all. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, use the booger. That'll help, won't it? All right. So we've got Abraham. He's going, and he's married to a beautiful lady called Sarai, or Sarah. I don't know. I guess you'd say Sarai, wouldn't you? Sarah, and so we've got Abraham and Sarah, and uh, they don't have any kids at this stage. Uh, God comes along, and well, but this they have they've got, they've got this idea. Okay, we're going to have kids, right? And so Sarah, and back 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 then, you could have some slaves if you wanted, and uh, if you're rich enough. And so these guys have some slaves, and and Sarah has a slave called Hagar. Yeah, Hagar is. Uh, the, so Sarah has this great idea. Sarah has this great idea. Well, Abraham. You know, like, since she's kind of like my property kind of thing, it's really a terrible way to say it, isn't it? Like, slavery is not cool. <laughs> and, and, but if you have a child with her, it's kind of like it's my child anyway. All right, does that kind of make sense? So, so Abraham thinks, that's well, that's not a bad idea. And, uh, and so they have a child together, and they have a child court. So I was going to do, how about I do A plus H, <laughs> equals equals a, a, a guy called Ishmael. A guy called Ishmael, right? And so and so and I think, okay, well, I've got a son. At least I've got a son. Now Hagar and Sarah I don't really get along because well, there's a little bit of tension there. There's a few things you probably shouldn't do with with uh, anyway. So <laughs> Abraham, Sarai, Hagar <coughs> We got Ishmael. Now Ishmael is pretty much considered by most people to be the the father of, of the Arab nations. Is that true? It's what it's what Muhammad claimed. What he, Muhammad claimed? Okay. When he made up the right. Okay. All right. So so it's 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 ambiguous. Some say it is. Some say it's not. And obviously Muhammad claimed claimed that was. The case now. This is, and, and it does say that that God will bless um, 
uh, Ishmael as well. And so that's great. And so then we get a little bit further down, chapter 17, when Abraham was 99 years old. Please. Yo. Question. Yes. Sorry. Please. How do you feel about Abraham? Ah, oh, yeah, Abraham and Hagar having a son. He, he was. That was not God's idea. And he still blessed him only because um, Abraham asked for the blessing. But it was not his idea. It was definitely not his idea. Yeah, um, exactly. And, uh, and, and, and God was like, are you serious? Like I promised you. Like I promised you and Sarah we have a child. You, you didn't need to try and work it out. I, I don't know if that happens in your life where God promises something and you're waiting for the promise. And you think, well, I've got a good idea. This is my idea. This is how I can help God fulfill his promise. Does God need help in fulfilling his promise? God does not need help in fulfilling his promise. He just needs us to do what he has asked us to do. When we do what God wants us to do, that's great. That's all you need to do. And so... Um, Oh, you remember, remember the guys were living like 700 years, 800 years, some 900 years? The years are getting lower. After the, after, the, after the flood, you'll notice when you look at the genealogies, the years start getting much lower really quickly. It starts off like 300 years, 200 years, and then it's like, by the time we get to Abraham, Abraham lives 170 years, okay? So this guy, I guess in today's kind of language, I reckon he's kind of like 60. Does that kind of make sense? Kind of guessing, right? Like 99, it's not like 99 today. Because he still lived another 70 years after this. But so, and Sarah, Sarah at this stage is, is uh, 90 years old. Now God comes again, so, and Ishmael now is 13. Alright, does that make sense? Ishmael's now a young, a young, uh, a young boy. Well, a young teenager. And, uh, and so God comes again, this is chapter 17. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant. That covenant just means promise. When we talk about Old Testament, Old Covenant, we mean old promise, that kind of thing. But this is the Abrahamic covenant between me and you, and, we'll, and I will greatly increase your numbers. Abraham fell face down, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will no longer, uh, you will be the father of many nations. The father of many nations. And just real quickly, I think this is a really important point. And, and that in, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, God said, I will make you a father of a great nation. A whole bunch of time has passed. And now God says, I will make you the father of many nations. Now I actually really believe that the longer the promise, you wait for the promise, it, it, it accrues interest. It's like, it's like money in a bank. When you have a promise from God and you have to wait long for it, I reckon it builds up and builds up and builds up. That's my, that's my personal belief there. All right, and so here he is and, and he says, this is my covenant with you, and you'll be the father of many nations. And no longer will you be called Abraham. Uh, your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. Abraham means father, and Abraham means father of many nations. And Sarai will now be called Sarah. It's interesting that... Um, so these guys called Abraham, and it goes to Abraham... And then we have Sarah, Sarai, and it goes to Sarah. Now, back in the east, back then, there was a, there was this there was this uh, um, custom between lesser kings and, and and greater kings. If you were if you had a if you had a promise, a covenant between kings, said, "Look, I tell you what, I won't come and kill you guys." This is kind of the promise, right? I won't come and kill you guys, provided. If we have a big war, you come and join our team and we'll fight those other dudes, all right? That makes sense? We call that? All right, all right, king. And then lesser king goes, 
All right, the king, that's fantastic. Um, that sounds good. I, I like not dying. Good. Okay. And so they make a covenant. And they actually, they used to change their names. And so what they would do is the greater king would insert some of his name into the lesser king. And, and for me, and I guess it's a little bit like our covenant when we make, when, when people get married, and not all the time this happens, but often um, the lady takes on the, na- the, the surname of, of the man, right? That often happens, obviously doesn't always, right? And, and it's a little bit like that. There's this, there's this covenant, there's this promise that is made that happens. Now here's God's name generally is thought of as this. We're going through a lot of stuff today. Yeshua is, 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 is Jesus, right? Yeshua is Jesus. But this is, uh, which is the Hebrew for Jesus. But this is um, what we'd say is Yahweh or Jehovah. Okay, so we don't really actually know how to pronounce it. The Jews actually sometimes don't pronounce it at all because because they're scared of saying God's name wrong because it doesn't have any it doesn't have any vowels. It's only got consonants, right? But he's got a couple of H's there, and check out what gets inserted into Abraham's name and Sarai's name. There's this covenant that is made with them, and their name gets changed. And, uh, and so some scholars believe that this, this H is kind of part of God's name, you know, kind of in, into them, right? And so, but, but, and, and so it's interesting, but I don't know how that affects us too much in our faith. But so we're going to get real practical now. Now, Abraham's faith was incredible. At this age, they have a child. It's called Isaac. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob's name is gets changed to Israel. They become the father of Israel. And it's incredible that Isaac, when he's a teenager, God says to Abraham, he's now Abraham, God says to Abraham, I want you to kill your son. I want you to sacrifice your son. And obviously, Abraham's like, well, I love this. <laughs> this is my son. I love him. And also, this is the promise of many nations. Why? This is ridiculous. That's the dumbest thing you've ever heard. If you think God is saying that to you, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? He said this to Abraham. Genesis chapter 22, he takes Abraham, uh, takes Isaac on a three-day journey. Now, he's a a teenager. And Abraham's an old man. Isaac takes, literally takes, so he's going to sacrifice him, right? Isaac literally takes the wood Everything that's needed to do this, to sacrifice himself. It's not Abraham. He doesn't have, probably doesn't have the strength to do this. And so he goes and he's obedient. This is incredible. I wouldn't be. This is faith that we can have, that we can have access to. We get, the, get a handle on on the faith that's available to us, the mustard seed faith that is available to us that changes everything, that changes Swansea, that changes your family, that changes your life. This is the transforming faith that you need. He takes he takes Isaac to this place. They do, they do a couple of days of journey. He puts him on the altar. Isaac has got big faith too. You know why? If I was Isaac... I'll punch my dad out. <laughs> Sorry, Dad, if you're watching this, but if you try and sacrifice me, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> and so Isaac lies there, doesn't do anything. And still, Abraham is going, God will do something. I know you'll do something. 
And in fact, it talks about in, in Romans and Hebrews, it talks about he was believing that he can raise the dead. And this has not happened before. We don't know the story of Jesus yet, but Abraham believes that he can raise the dead. So he thinks, well, if I do what God asked me to do and he dies, well, he can come back to life and it'll be okay. This is literally his thinking. And so he goes to kill him. He's literally about to kill him. And God says, stop! And he stops. And right then he looks around and there is a ram, a sheep, caught in some bushes. And he says, sacrifice the, the ram instead. You know that spot? That exact spot is believed to be the place that Jesus died on the cross. That exact spot where Abraham lifted up that knife and, and, and was about to be obedient to God until God said, stop. Is, it, is, is thought to be the place called Golgotha, the place where Jesus died on the cross for us. And so here, it, this is where we get the name, the Lord will provide... <laughs> The Lord provided a lamb, and this lamb was slain. Now, here is a type of Jesus as well. This is pointing to, like, we are meant to be, we, we are not meant to survive, you know, it's this separation with God. It's meant to be eternal separation. But God, because he is merciful, God, because he loves us, and that's the only reason, God, because he loves us, said, I will die for them. And when John saw Jesus walking towards him in the New Testament, he's walking along and John says, he sees Jesus in the background and he says to everyone who was following him, he says, look, look over there, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God when we read about the Passover, we'll get more of an understanding of the Lamb. But the point is, this faith is so incredible. The faith that Jesus was going to do something. And so the Bible tells us that in kind of a way, he sort of did get Isaac back from the dead. Figuratively speaking, the Bible says. And Jesus literally died on the cross. And Jesus literally came back to life a couple of days later. Jesus literally Brings people to life today. Physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Why you just close your eyes? Jesus, I just thank you for being that lamb for us who took our place. God, I thank you for the faith of Abraham. God, I thank you for the faith that, that we can see in him. Lord, I thank you that he was credited with righteousness just because he believed. Lord, I thank you that today is a day that we can be credited with righteousness, that we can go from being not in a good place with you, not saved, into a place where we know you and again we are righteous and we have salvation forever and ever, which starts the moment you accept to. And so God, I just, I just thank you that, that you made a way, that you are the Lord who will provide and that you provided a way for us to get out of our messy situation. And our situation was we're in sin and our situation is that we couldn't get out of it and the punishment for sin is something we could not bear. And I just thank you, Lord, that you took on that punishment for us and you said, well, I'm going to do it and I'm going to defeat death and I will not let death be the, the full stop. And that is just a comma, a transition. And that, God, I just thank you, Lord, that through you we can be saved. 
that what you did on that cross, Lord, at that same place where Isaac was kind of raised from the dead in a way, that at that same place that you died, you took away the sin of our lives even when we keep sinning. Because you're good and because we can have belief in you. Oh, I thank you, Lord, for the cross. Lord, that place where we have nothing to offer except trust in you. And this morning, and I mean, it's, I mean, the story of Abraham is 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 so. It's so relevant to accepting Jesus as your Lord and Saviour today. So we have, I have to give an opportunity to, to do that if that's what you want to do. So I invite you, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, do it today. Do it today. It's really simple. It's all about trust in what he's done. It's not about trust in what you can do. It's actually about trusting what he's done. And I tell you what, it's not even about what it is that you will do. Like I think if, if you're worried that if I accept Jesus as my Lord and Saviour today and then I mess it up tomorrow, that I, then I'm going to miss the boat, it doesn't work that way. When we accept Jesus as Lord and Saviour today, it's Lord and Saviour. Like he, he accepts that and he says, okay, all right. It's today, it's tomorrow, and it's forever. Blessed are those whose transgressions the Lord does not remember. Blessed are they whose sins are forgiven. And I tell you what, the secret is just trusting in Him.